my Saints, though, man. Of course, everybody you know was saying, oh, I told you so. The Saints choked again, da 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 this and that. You know, you're right. Of course, they they did their thing, I guess, the infamous thing that they've done the last four years in the NFL. And, of course, me as a fan, I hate to see this, but I got to take a look at the realistic side of this and really understand what's going down with New Orleans. Before we dig into all this, though, Juju, was it more of a – football disappointment to see Drew go out like that or was it more of a emotional disappointment to see Drew Brees play so badly in what could have been his last NFL game I think we've grown so numb to the aging process in the NFL seeing guys like Brees and Brady do it for so long that we forget that this guy is on the back nine of his career and most quarterbacks go out like that right Uh, Peyton Manning was lucky enough to get to retire a Super Bowl champion um, but sent him off the perfect way, but you know, at one point that season, he could have also been done and benched for Brock Osweiler forever. That right. one gave me through like four interceptions in the first half, almost had a Nathan Peterman performance himself. Mm. I think we can't completely forget at what point Drew's career is. And it's odd though, when you do look across the sideline and see a guy like Tom Brady, who's doing it could play all the way up to his fifties. If he wanted to, at this point, it looks like. Yeah. I guess the key is TB12, but (laughs) as far as um, Drew, um, it it definitely is a football disappointment because um, we are just seeing that turning over of the old guard. Obviously, Ben Roethlisberger didn't look great in his last game. Phil Rivers was kind of average. So those old guys are starting to move on out, and really Brady's the last man standing at this point. Drew Brees' final, you know, final stat line uh, in the game against the Bucks for the playoffs: nineteen of thirty-four, one hundred and thirty-four yards, fifty-six percent completion, one touchdown, three picks. Uh, his longest throw of the game was sixteen yards, and honestly, once Tampa Bay adjusted, Drew just looked lost. Uh, shout out to my buddy Jansen Harris. It kind of rubbed me the wrong way at first, but once he gave the take, I really understood it. It didn't really feel like Drew Brees was hungry for a Super Bowl in this game like yes the Saints came out and they played well up front but down the stretch and I mean I really feel like after you know the beginning of that game it was all Tampa Bay Tom Brady was you know great in the second half Tampa Bay played well but more than anything you just hate to see this as a fan you know of football as a fan of the Saints obviously New Orleans doing what they've done the past three years in the playoffs and that's something I really want to touch on obviously you know with the NFC championship game The big thing that stands out to me is me being a huge fan. I have definitely seen the small cracks in the armor of Drew and the team over the years that I think have cost us some of those trips to the Super Bowl. Uh, We go back to the obviously no call against the Rams, the NFC Championship game like I was just touching on here. Drew Brees misses a few key throws in that game. There's a couple of overthrows, and there's actually one underthrow that's almost an interception that really keeps them out of that game. You know, the offense didn't take early advantage. I really felt like it should have been 21 nothing early on. You get a pick on Jared Goff at home home in the first quarter and you only get a field goal out of that a bad play calling when it mattered the most you look at the uh, last year obviously against the Vikings the offense was vanilla felt like there was no rhythm I mean we struggled against a Vikings team that really had no business obviously hanging in that game but they came in were coached well they played hard and they were able to take the football game because they wanted it more than the Saints did at that point Sean Payton's uh, excuse me Sean Payton's play calling was bad again no adjustment turnovers yet again and then you obviously look this year at the Bucks. everybody saw what happened on Sunday uh, and but but the thing that bothers me the most, and, and and here's the thing about New Orleans in this game is I felt like the game was there for the taking again for the Saints, and they shot themselves in the foot. You look at Deontay Harris comes out with two huge returns, over 100 yards of returns within the first two punts of the game for the Bucks. Touchdown gets called back when I felt like was a bad block in the back call, but I'm not going to argue a call. It, it happened. We moved on in the game. There were more chances to score outside of that. You get a chance to score a touchdown both times with those returns, and you get one field goal out of that. And the Bucks don't come out great in that game either. Marcus Williams almost picks off Brady early on, and then the turnover started, which all three picks from Drew were obviously forced. I want to ask Juju, maybe you agree with me. Do you feel like Drew Brees has kind of become predictable in the playoffs, like everybody has a blueprint on how to beat the undersized, you know, noodle-armed quarterback that Drew Brees has been dubbed as nowadays? When it comes to predictable, I, obviously you have 20 years of track record to look at what Drew's career is, what his limitations are, what his skill set provides. I wouldn't say it's predictable as much as it's just a matter of Drew just running out of stamina there at the end. Um, and when you play those better defenses in the playoffs, certainly this one, you're playing a team for the third time. And I know it's a cliche narrative, but it is true. You don't generally beat a team three times or certainly blow them out like the Saints have this season. Um, And 
I guess it comes down to this for me, is it more bad Saints or is it just good Tampa? And I think that it's more on the side of good Tampa, good Tom Brady. Tom Brady's great at making those second half adjustments to be able to um, succeed in the playoffs like he has. Obviously, we have such a long track record of him doing it. And I do think that that's what came into play because, you know, the Saints obviously did establish the lead. You do have to look at Drew's limitations and then also consider that he had Michael Thomas out there, apparently more banged up than he was letting on playing through injury. Right. Um, and the Saints just, or the Bucks just did a great job of stuffing Alvin Kamara at points throughout that game. Really, they could have kept riding Kamara. In my mind, they could have ran, run yeah, him a little bit more because 18 carries he for did five yards. He was putting yeah. his work when he needed to, man. He had that burst and clearly it wasn't, you weren't getting it done with the passing game. Um, as far as, again, just the Drew Brees, I, I, I think it just it shows back to that Dallas Cowboys game a few years back when the Saints were rolling, and then it just seemed like the Wolves came off the bus. I think I know, think you remember which game I'm talking I about. I know exactly what game you're talking about because 2018 no-call year, Drew Brees was literally – that was the game that really knocked the Saints' offense off. Like, I feel like I've never seen the same Saints since then. Like, when we beat the Bucks 38-3, I felt like I was looking at the 2018 Saints at their peak – in that game. And then, you know, we lose to Dallas and I feel like that was the game that cost Drew Brees the first spot in the MVP race. Cause that's what was, you know, it was when Mahomes went for 50 touchdowns, 5,000 yards. Mm -hmm.